is this GPT going to be your new go-to research assistant for reading, analyzing, sourcing things, or is it just one pony that's trying to do too many tricks? All right, let's find out together live. What's going on? This is our AI in five. If you're new here, this is Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. Or, you know, we do a little five minute tutorial almost every single day. So uh, we're going to be looking today at this Ask Your PDF Research Assistant. So this is a GPT. Um, so you need the paid version of Chat GPT chat gpt plus in order to use this gpt so i will leave the link in the description if you wanted to give it a try so let's just jump in and we're going to start uh we're going to start using it right away so what i always recommend is always ask what a gpt can do so i'm just going to type that in i'm saying please give me a bullet point of this gpt's capabilities right uh, so this is from ask your pdf uh if you've used you know back when we had plugins rip uh ask your pdf was one of the more popular plugins um so they've uh, released a lot of different products into the uh i guess the chat gpt uh ecosphere so uh here's what it says that this research assistant can do so it is an ai essay writer with references an ai references and citation tool you can chat with your pdf so that is the kind of what the company uh, itself is known for this is obviously their uh research assistant gpt but uh, you can still use the chat with pdf uh functionalities so those are kind of the main uh categories so let's just jump in and uh start testing it out so I'm just going to start with something simple. I'm going to say, please write me an 800 word blog post about machine learning and cite all your sources. All right. So another thing, and we'll ask this right away is where, uh, this is getting its data from. Uh, so we'll see that I wanted to kind of find out live and in real time, these aren't super polished and edited videos where we, you know, put, you know, exp Exploding graphics on the screen. We just do this live and figure it out because I think that's uh, important. So, uh, so we're getting some in body citations, uh, which is which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm assuming at the end we're going to get uh, links so we can read uh, where these are coming from. So it looks like there's a citation here. Uh, so it's we're talking about the core concepts of machine learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, etc. Uh, I'm wondering also how old uh, these citations are going to be for something like machine learning that's been around uh, for a very long time. It's it's fine that these are you know quote unquote older. You know, 2020 uh, machine learning's been around for many decades. Uh, so I'm looking, okay, so we're getting some other in-body citations, pretty nice. Uh, I would like to see uh, the, the links there, uh, but it's okay. I'm assuming the links are all going to be at the bottom. All right, so we have a pretty pretty standard, uh, you know, kind of blog post here. Okay, so here are our references. So unfortunately, they are not linked, uh, where I think a lot of these kind of research GPTs do link them. Uh, I'll try to put the related videos, but uh, Consensus, um, Scholar, AI, I, I do believe those uh, kind of research GPTs uh, link these, but at least we have uh, kind of um, the sources here. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead. You should always, before you use a GPT, you should always make sure it's not just hallucinating, uh, hallucinating, hallucinating things, making up uh, sources. So let's see. Uh, so it looks like this is an actual, uh, an actual source. So that's good. Uh, it'd be bad if it wasn't. So uh, pretty, pretty simple stuff in this GPT. So uh, let's go back up and see what else it can do. So AI references and research tool, AI essay. Okay, so we kind of tested one and two. So let's chat, uh, let's test the uh, chat with PDF. Uh, so I have a little prompt here ready. So I'm gonna say, please analyze this document and tell me what Jordan's favorite food is. Uh, so it did say up here um, in its capabilities, it says it can handle, uh, PDF documents, which we can upload, but Hey, chat GPT by default does that. Um, so what chat GPT by default cannot do is visit URLs for PDFs. So, uh, I have this PDF on my website, pretty simple stuff. Uh, just a little needle in the haystack test. So what that means is I put in some random unrelated information, uh, in the middle here. So I have it on page 23 of 41. Um, so I'm actually going to change this up halfway through, uh, because I think it's going to, I think it's going to answer this question fine. So I'm going to say, please analyze this document and tell me if there's anything out of place. Uh, so I'm going to do that first before I just give it a direct, um, a direct question. I'm going to say, tell me if anything is out of place. 
Okay, so obviously uh, in this document here, so there's my prompt. I'm saying, please analyze this document and tell me if anything is out of place, right? Uh, this document, it's just, it's random, right? So uh, a lot of this is just transcripts from other uh, podcast episodes, but I mean, everything else in here is about learning generative AI. So this random information about myself is obviously out of place. So we'll see if... Um, we will see. So yeah, this, this random uh, information is out of place. So we'll see if chat GPT finds that. So it says the document you provided appears to be a detailed discussion about various aspects of AI technology. Good. Uh, so let's see if it finds anything. So it's first, it's giving me a detailed summary of the document. So that's good. Uh, so let's see if it finds anything out, out of place. So it didn't find anything out of place, but that's okay. Uh, so let's just go ahead and see now if we um, can tell it to find the needle in the haystack. So first we just said, hey, is there a needle in the haystack? And it says, hey, it doesn't look like it. Uh, so uh, the good thing is it did properly kind of go through there. It found uh, this, this uh, piece of information in the middle of the document. So that's good. Uh, so uh, what do I think of this GPT? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty good. So it does multiple things. So I'm not going to say, at least from my initial uh, research, that it's a Swiss army knife or anything like that. I'm actually going to try one more thing. Um, and I'm going to say incite all your sources, uh, only using sources from 2023 and 2024. So we'll let this run. I'm just going to see how it, uh, kind of more about its sourcing database, which we asked about, but I don't really know about, um, you, you know, kind of these databases that it uses for its sourcing. So I'm just going to ask and see if it can follow that, um, you, you know, that prompt a little more closely. So we'll see if the sources that it uses are also from the years 2023 and 2024. All right, good. So uh, you'll also see it, it is a little different here, right? So this time I can actually click it in body, which the last time I could not. So again, both GPTs and large language models are generative. They're not deterministic. So uh, sometimes you're you're going to get different outputs depending on your input. I didn't really change much there uh, in the prompt aside from saying only using sources from 2023 and 2024. Um, previously, I did ask it to cite the sources and it did, but it didn't link them in the body. So a little different output this time. It's obviously better that I can go in here and you know click these sources and then read the actual paper. So it's bringing this in from Semantic Scholar. Uh, so, so uh, overall, I think this is a good chat, uh, a, a good GPT to use, especially if you are trying to learn something, if you're trying to write, uh, you, you know, more scholarly papers. And if you want to make sure that you're bringing in accurate, up-to-date, uh, information free from hallucinations, uh, personally, I do like consensus and scholar AI a little better, uh, but this does have, uh, additional features and functionality that those GPTs don't have. All right. I hope this was helpful. If so, let me know uh, with a comment or go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for that free delay newsletter. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you back for another AI in five.